we are not taking anything for granted. We're going to hammer to do everything we can before the polls close the evening of November 8th. That, of course, vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine on Meet the Press this morning as he and Hillary Clinton focus on down-ballot races, which could help determine control of the Senate. Joining me now, Harry Enton, senior political writer at 538. Harry, with a welcome to you. We've got these recent polls showing Republicans could be in some down-ballot trouble. Marco Rubio tied with his opponent in Florida right now. Kelly Ayotte behind in New Hampshire. And I know you wrote that according to the 538 forecast, Democrats have a 73% chance of winning back the Senate. That's a pretty big jump from just last week. So what changed? I think the big thing that changed was actually neither of those two races, um, but really in Missouri with Jason Kander going up against Blunt, the incumbent, Republican incumbent there. And then in Nevada, where Joe Hecht had held a lead, uh, obviously in the race to replace Harry Reid, but we've seen the Democrat in that race come up significantly. So those two races, along with New Hampshire, have really helped Democrats have a pretty good shot of taking back the U.S. Senate. Wow. I'm just looking at the stats in your uh, article here. Up 23 points in Missouri with the Roy Blunt. That's huge in right. this last week. Right. Yeah. That's the percentage chance that he would right. win. A 23 percentage point jump in the chance that he'd win. But we've seen some more positive polls for them. And if you talk to Republicans in Missouri, they are very, very worried that Blunt is going to lose his reelection mm -hmm, bid. Mm -hmm. So, what is behind all of it? Could it be that Republican candidates here that we're talking about, that they've been supporting Trump for too long? It, it's a little bit of both, right? So, if you look at someone like Joe Hecht, has now distanced himself from Donald Trump. So, it could be that, in fact, some Republicans who are going to vote for, vote for Trump say, I don't really necessarily want to vote for Hecht. If you look in a state like New Hampshire with Kelly Ayotte, she called Trump a role model, then had to back up, and now is no longer backing Donald Trump. So, they really are just fighting where they're saying, wait a minute, I need the Republican base, but at the same time, I need to get those voters in the middle, and it's this difficult balancing act, and it just doesn't seem like they're pulling it off. Well, it's also kind of whiplash for their constituents, right? They don't know what to believe. Yeah, exactly. It's it's basically they're just going with the wind, right? And it's just very, very difficult because there's just no formula here. There's no one that has ever run for president who's been quite like Donald Trump. So these Republican incumbents just don't know how to deal with it. Okay, we've talked Missouri, New Hampshire, Nevada. I know you've got six states total. Uh, talk about North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and India. Are those the other ones, right? Yeah. North Carolina is a state where Burr, the incumbent, is probably leading, but by a small margin. We expect a pretty close, you know, most voters who are going to vote for Hillary Clinton are going to vote for Deborah Ross, the Democratic candidate, but the race is so tight in that, in that state. Pennsylvania, I don't know who's going to win. I don't think most people know who's going to win. Pat Toomey has run a good campaign. He hasn't endorsed Donald Trump, but he hasn't distanced himself. He seems to be the one who's balancing it best. And if you look at the state like Indiana, Evan Bayh, who's trying to reclaim his old seat, the public polls, although limited, do show that he is leading over Young, the Republican nominee. Here's something interesting, and it's almost like you have to be a sociologist to understand this, but you write about four different reasons why presidential pollings could be wrong. The one I want to talk about, uh, rather, I, I know you didn't write about it, but the one I want to talk about is the shy factor, shy voters. This article listing that this could be one of the big reasons, these shy voters being those that are saying, you know, I don't want to admit that I'm going to be voting for Donald Trump, but I'm going to go do it maybe behind him when I'm privately in the po polling booth. I mean, how much is that a factor in this election, do you think? You know, I've heard this argument over and over and over again from Republicans who say, you know what, you're not counting these people who are not going to show, who are saying that they're not going to vote for Trump, but will in the end. Look back to the primary. Look at the polling. The polling, in fact, if anything, overestimated how well Donald Trump was going to do. And if you look back at past campaigns where they made the same argument of shy voters, maybe it was Todd Aiken in 2012 running for the Senate in Missouri, or maybe it's David Duke running for governor in Louisiana in 1991. In both those cases, in fact, those candidates either met or fell behind what they were polling while it was the Democratic candidates who did much better than expected. All right. Harry Enton from uh, 538. Thank you so much. Good to talk with you. Thank you.